Hello, welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Koosje Koene and I love drawing. Life is better when you draw it. It's true and I have a few other truths to tell about your creative habit. And uh, that's actually in my book called Life is Better When You Draw It. It's almost out. It's almost ready for you to buy. And the link is below the video. And in the book, of course, there is a section about materials. And I often get questions about my materials. And today I would love to uh, talk about my watercolor palette because I use watercolors quite often in my sketchbook. It is my way to color my world. Um, and often I also combine it with colored pencils or um, crayons, but watercolor is sort of a go-to because you can work with them fairly quickly. It's easy to take on location. Well, I just love it. I will show you my palette today and I hope it's helpful. But the real message of today's video is Make sure that you know your palette well. Know where every color is. You can put your colors in a certain order so that it feels familiar and it feels um, intuitive. And also know which colors you can make with the colors that you have. You don't need to use them straight from the pan. Actually better if you don't. But also know how to mix them without making muddy colors. So today I will show you my palette and how I use some of the colors mostly. In my palette I use empty pans and half pans and I fill these pans with paint from tubes. And the tubes are from the brand Daniel Smith. Whatever brand of paint you use, make sure that you know your colors. If you don't know your palette well just yet, then make swatches. Take a look at the order they're in on your palette. Does it make sense to you? Can you change it up? Do you know the difference between your blue and your green? Sometimes that's very hard to see. So do you want them next to each other or would you rather have them further apart so it works more intuitively for you? Also mix your paints and see how they behave. Try mixing more water or less water and Try it on different kinds of paper too. You might be surprised about the diversity of results. Over the years, I have found that I like having two different yellows in my palette, a more lemony yellow and a warm yellow. The yellows are a little bit more opaque than the rest in my palette and I know that and I can use it to my benefit. I like to have a natural sienna or a yellow ochre or something like that. And once I fell in love with the versatility of quinacridone gold, then after a while I took it out of my palette, but then I started to miss it at some point and I put it back in. Also I need brown in my palette. I like burnt sienna, which is quite transparent. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it isn't. Burnt umber is great to use straight from the tube and for mixing. Van Dyke brown is a very deep dark brown, which is great for mixing too. I like to have two different blues in my palette and two greens, a warmer and a cooler one. And the same goes for red, although currently I have added a third red back in that I had left out for a while as well. Some people like having black in their palette, especially for mixing exciting greens combined with yellow. Black can be useful. I never use black. Maybe that's partly because I like working with a pitch black ink that I like to combine with my watercolors? I don't know. I also don't have a gray in my palette. I know many people who love Payne's gray to use for shadows, for example. It is indeed a wonderful color, but I like to mix my own gray. I do that because I have more control over the warmer or cooler tone. And I also like that it'll be a little different with each mix. That keeps it lively. I use Van Dyke Brown and Indigo as a basis for gray. Or I'll use Burnt Umber and Ultramarine for a cool grey. Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine combine into a nice grey too. And you can also add a tiny bit of red for a little bit of a warmer or almost purplish grey. I often get the question how to mix skin tone. And that of course is a question that doesn't have one answer. Because there are as many skin tones as there are people in the world. One of the basic colors could be burnt sienna. You can water it down or use it more saturated. I like to add a tiny bit of warm red to make the skin look a little blushy. 
You could also add a bit of quinacridone rose for a more pinkish glow. And of course here, when mixing, you can get endless variety. When you use a lot of water with burnt umber, it gives a great variation for skin colors. And when you add more pigment, you can paint darker skin tones. Same idea here, add a little bit of red for great variation. Now I'm just picking out a few of my favorite colors, like quinacridone gold. You can layer it to deepen the color immensely, and with more pigment, the yellow starts to shine into a sort of glowy ochre, I guess you could call it. It's really quite different than the other yellows that I have in my palette. Quinacridone gold also mixes really well with green for an endless variety when you're drawing and painting nature. Hooker's green is a color that is very often part of a basic palette. And at first I wondered why. It's a bit of an artificial looking color on its own. So I never use it straight from the pen, but you can create beautiful shades when you mix it with other colors. Indigo, for example or mix it with red for natural greens and browns. And when you combine it with cerulean blue, you get a bright color close to viridian. And viridian is great to mix with brown for natural looking khakis. I could go on forever, but I think it's time for you to get to know your palette really well. Making swatches and mixing your colors is really a good way to get to know your watercolor palette. To um, also discover if you need, if there's anything missing that you need. Once you know which colors you prefer, it's quite easy. And then you feel more confident when you start adding paint or using paint in your sketchbook. I hope it's helpful. I will see you next week. More about materials and all that kind of stuff. You can find that on my Patreon page. And um, if you want, you can become a patron by supporting me. You will find the link below the video. And I'll see you next week. Bye.